welcome to this day. It is Saturday, April 24th. Welcome to the show. Okay, on our show today, we have City of Hope. Now, it's with Annette Walker, who is the president, and Larry Zieber, who is the vice president of philanthropy. And they were just awarded a very large donation. So they wanted to tell us all about it. And then we have the Orange County Vector Control with Heather Highland. And believe it or not, we have a new pest in town. And uh, it's been here for a couple of years, but she really wanted to let us know about it uh, and what to watch out for. Okay, our vaccination resources that we normally give you are the same. And uh, for you to be able to be uh, vaccinated from the points of distribution, you're going to want to register at Othena.com or you can find the vaccinations around town by going to vaccinefinder.org and you just type in your zip code and this will give you all of the in-stock vaccinations uh, located at either Vaughn's, Albertson's, Pavilions, Rite Aid, uh, CVS, lots of different places to choose from. So uh, check that out. All right, our weather this weekend, um, you know, still not super warm. So we are going to um, be only in the high 60s today, 6752. Tomorrow, 6555. And then Monday, 6051. Cloudy with showers possible. So uh, we'll take a look at that uh, Monday morning to see. You know, it's just not going to be very heavy, just a little bit of sprinkles. And if you are traveling in California, our temperatures are looking fairly normal 6354 6045 6556 you know for this time of year if you're heading to the snow high sierras has spring conditions 40 20 21 big bear 57 27 and mammoth 45 25 and palm springs is a nice 85 with an overnight of 56. our sunrise this morning was at 609 and our sunset will be at 729 allen Thank you. You followed this poor guy around, or girl, I'm not sure, but very pretty. Thank you for sending that in. If you have a photo that you would like to share with the community, please email it to LagunaWoodsVillageTV at gmail.com. All right, when we return, we will have the City of Hope, so stay tuned. Today, we are marking the beginning of a new era as City of Hope opens its first location right here in Newport Beach. We have 500 scientists and doctors who have dedicated their lives to beating cancer. So they use that intellectual capital to try to make sure every patient gets the best care possible that's known to science. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Larry Zieber and Annette Walker, who are here on behalf of City of Hope, Orange County. Well, thank you both for joining me. I appreciate it. It's great to be here today, Lisa. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. It is. Thank you for having us. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, we've seen Annette a couple of different times here. And so, Larry, you are fairly new to our community. Uh, but not new to City of Hope, of course. But could you give me just a brief background on what your position is and how long you've been with City of Hope? Certainly. I have been at City of Hope for about 18 months as the Vice President of Philanthropy here in Orange County. And it's great to be coming back to Orange County. I've worked um, uh, in the area previously at UC Irvine. And, it, you know, it's great to be back. Okay, excellent. And have you been working in uh, the philanthropy arena for some time? Yeah, I've been working in the philanthropy arena for 30 or more years, wow. um, mainly for uh, medical causes like City of Hope, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and others. Fantastic. Well, Annette, that's a, that's a good catch. Oh, he's wonderful. He's um, not only very capable, he's really just great to work with. So um, he's prized member of my team. That's, that's a great combination to have for sure. Yeah. So Annette, we, we have a very large donation here that was recently given to City of Hope. What a yeah. godsend. Oh my gosh, you're, you're not kidding, Lisa. You know, um, 
I'm just so grateful that we have an organization like Lennar Homes. And, you know, Lennar has been a member of the Orange County community for a long time. And probably many people listening today either live in or have perhaps lived in one of their homes. And they've always been great. And they have faithfully over the years um, taken a portion of the profit of every home and put it into a foundation of which they give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And we are so blessed that here in Orange County, they have gifted a gift of $50 million for City of Hope Orange County. And this gift is such a transformational gift that it, you and I are going to benefit from it. Larry's going to benefit from it. But our children are going to benefit from this too. This is a massive gift that is going to impact the community for many, many years to come. And we are so grateful and everybody in Orange County should be grateful for Lennar to be such a fantastic member of the community to give to, to Orange County um, through City of Hope. But this is for all of us. It's not for City of Hope. It's for the people of Orange County. So, you know, with that said, Larry, how does a gift like this really help transform the community as well as City of Hope? Like, what's it going to do for everyone? I think it really lifts the whole community up. What a, what a gift of this magnitude says to our community is this is a project of importance. And it really underscores the impact the second City of Hope campus here in Orange County, what, what that impact is going to have on our community and healthcare in the region. So I think it's really exciting. And uh, the Lennar Foundation stepping forward, I think might inspire others to, to see how they can get involved too. Now, uh, Lennar, I mean, I, I'm familiar with them. They, like you said, they've been in the uh, community for a really long time and like, and many of us lived in their homes. How, um, how did this gift kind of come about? Um, how did you connect with them? They've had a long relationship with City of Hope, and um, so it's it's not um, an impulsive give. It's they've known City of Hope for many years through the construction industry, and Larry can talk a little bit about our uh, City of Hope's relationship with with industries. Construction is not the only one, or the home building industry. But if you'd had the opportunity to hear some of the interviews that day. Um, John Jaffe, who is the co-CEO of Lennar Homes, made a statement that what has always impressed him about City of Hope and his long 20-year relationship was the culture and that culture of compassion that we have. We not only have extraordinary science and extraordinary cancer care, but we deliver that with extraordinary compassion. And his, um, he remarked upon a, an event that happened to him at a barbecue 20 years ago where a woman had spoken about her experience at City of Hope when her husband passed away and how she was so moved that the valet had been so compassionate and caring to her that uh, this she could not contain this story. And John remembers how she told that story and the impact it had on her. And that that was the beginning of a relationship that has lasted many years and is now resulting in this gift. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing. And, and Larry, you had mentioned earlier that it, this may inspire others. Are you seeing that coming forth now? We really are. I mean, I think that the response from the community to City of Hope's arrival has really been inspiring. Um, you, we have a strong community of uh, philanthropic supporters in Orange County already, more than 12,000. Um, as Annette said, we have a, a footprint here with various industry groups. So, you know, donors and volunteers who have been involved for many years. So, you know, their engagement is becoming even more deep, um, but more, uh, but new people are stepping forward as well. Um, you know, getting involved, providing support in ways that make sense to them. Well, yes, and, and you know, it is a very large complex that you are building. So I think that, as you both have mentioned, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in various areas. Um, you know, like you said, research and care and uh, clinical trials and, and vaccinations and things like that. Uh -huh. You can really have a full gamut of things going on. Um, so since the last time we talked, Annette, how is Irvine coming along? On time and on budget. Those are the two things I ask every time we meet. On time and on budget. So we're we're really excited. You know, Larry and I today this afternoon we were able to give a tour to um, 
you know, one of our donors. And it, it's just every week that we go, it's moving along. You can see the, um, the structure beginning to emanate. And um, the places that have, we've seen on paper are coming to life. And it just, we're, we're very excited. But things are good. Things are good. We're, we have no reason to anticipate that City of Hope is not going to arrive when announced in Orange County. Oh, I, that is really good news. I haven't driven by that area in a while, so I, I'm not quite sure you know, where it's at because I haven't seen it. But nonetheless, hopefully you'll be able to give us some updated photos because we have shown Absolutely. photos from before. So if you have some updated stuff, that will be great to have. And, and Larry, if people are interested in participating in the Orange County Initiative you know, to help with City of Hope, what should they do? There are so many ways to get involved. Uh, if people are interested in getting involved philanthropically, they can certainly reach out to me. But just staying apprised of our progress is really important. And you can always learn more just by visiting www.cityofhope.oc. OK, perfect. Now, would that be City of Hope? Uh, is it City of, let's try that again. Is it cityofhope.org or cityofhope.com? Dot org, cityofhope.org slash OC. Forward slash OC. Okay, would you say that one yeah. more time for me? Say, if they would like sure. to get involved. Yeah, if they would like to get involved, they can reach out to me or they can stay apprised of our progress by visiting www.cityofhope.org forward slash OC. Perfect. Well, it's so nice to speak with both of you. Congratulations. And Annette, we look forward to seeing more and hearing mm -hmm. more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's an opportunity. And anybody out there who hears this, if you get an opportunity to thank a Lennar employee or anybody you know in the Lennar Corporation, please thank them. It's, it's just wonderful that, you know, corporate organizations would be so generous. So it's not ordinary. We all should be very grateful for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for the information. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Great day. Thank you. All right. And we'll be right back after this. Parkinson's disease is a neurological movement disorder affecting an estimated 1 million Americans, including many under age 40. The American Parkinson Disease Association is the largest grassroots network in the United States, working to help ease the burden and find the cure for those coping with Parkinson's. Visit APDAoptimism.org today to find out how you can help millions live with dignity and optimism. Your action today will help APDA put an end to Parkinson's disease. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Heather Highland, who is the Public Information Officer for the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining me. Tis the season. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's starting early this year. Thank you so much for having me on today. You're welcome. And, you know, we talked a little bit offline, and, and I think it's interesting what you said is that even though you came from a larger area, the greater Los Angeles area with more than 6 million people, we have about 3 million people, but you're not seeing much of a difference in terms of the workload, which is really a shame because maybe you thought you were going to something a little less stressful, <laughs> but, but not so much. Tell me why. Well, you know, mosquito control is a year round effort. So I, I think um, Greater LA usually works with just mosquitoes. Orange County actually has is brought in their control efforts. So we not only control for mosquitoes, we have an education program for rats. Mm -hmm. uh, red imported fire ants, we do control for red imported fire ants. We do tests. So we have in um, in house testing capabilities to test for flea borne typhus. So we do test fleas and we do test ticks for diseases. Okay. Um, we do also test the mosquitoes in house for West Nile virus. So it's it's actually a very extensive operation that we do have. Um, so I think it's just, you know, when the mosquito season comes, every vector control agency has a big workload. So as we see, every sister agency that we have, every vector control agency has a large workload when the mosquito season starts. So you almost feel like no matter if you have 6 million residents versus 3.2, the workload is, is pretty much the same. You're seeing the same efforts. You're seeing the same control methods. 
and you're seeing people calling to complain about bites. Okay. Now around the year, I think you said it was 2015, we're seeing a new species that's coming from where? So we first started seeing indications of this invasive species in Mission Viejo in 2015 in Orange County. We already knew that Greater LA were having issues with this invasive species. It's called the 80s mosquito. It's black and white striped. It's very small. Um, it's kind of an incognito mosquito. You'll see them floating very low. That's why they're now known as the ankle biters. Mm -hmm. And the issue that we're having with this mosquito is they're not like our native species, the Culex species. This particular species, I call them backyard breeders because they prefer the indoors, which is a whole new ballpark for us. Oh, um, educating residents on indoor breeding now. They also prefer to breed in small containers. So not only can they breed in small containers, they don't need water at the time they lay eggs. So mm -hmm. the eggs can stay viable for years. So as we're seeing these type of mosquitoes adapt to this environment, they actually adapt very well to urban environments. Mm. So Just, we, they could breed pretty much anywhere. We're seeing them breed in kiddie pools, in saucers, tires, um, little tiny toys that you see in the backyard, and even in a cap full of water in trash. So oh they do have the capability to breed in these little sources. We have seen them indoors breeding in jars where people are leaving um, house plant cuttings even in the Keurig dishes, those little coffee makers, the water dish below, they can breed in there. If you're not using a guest, a guest bathroom with the drain, just sitting there with the dirty water, um, drains, they do, we have seen them breeding in drains. Um, oh my gosh. Well, God, what's the point of having a screen door anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I, I always tell people, I say, you know, people in Florida have those indoor screen patios for um, a it's reason, just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Really, it must be a matter of time. We're going to be screening in our whole yards pretty soon. But you know, are they so are they so tiny that they could get through some of those? That is something that we've actually tried. We say we might have to test this because I have seen screens that are a little bit larger, and they do have the potential to squeeze through those. Yeah. So we tell people maybe use the air conditioning if you do have it. If you don't, uh, if you get a rotational fan that you can actually have on you on the patio or indoors. Mosquitoes are weak flyers, so oh. they're not going to fly towards that wind. So that's a, a nice natural way to kind of deter them from flying on you. Okay. Um, but this species is daytime biting, aggressive, black and white striped. I've seen them floating in the air. You can see those really vibrant stripes. Mm. And it's, it's just a different species all around, pretty much the way that they breed, their behavior. Okay. If you even have one in your house, you'll get about 10 bites because they are cluster biters. They will bite over and over. Well, does the bug spray work okay? Yes. So different things that we have on our website, if you go to ocvector.org, we have DIY solutions and it has a large resource page. And one of the things that we say is a tip tossic action, tip out standing water, toss out unneeded containers where they can lay eggs and take action, wear repellent. So repellent can really help you from uh, even preventing bites. These particular mosquitoes can bite through clothing if it's tightly up against your skin. So we're talking about like leggings or jingings, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually spray the repellent on my pants. To prevent oh, the bite. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, wearing long socks. Like if you were hiking or walking and you bring long mm -hmm. socks, can they bite through your socks? If they're pretty thick, I usually, I wear socks and I haven't gotten bit, um, but wearing loose long sleeve clothing can help if you really don't want to wear repellent. There are different ingredients that work really well with the species. You have DEET, IR3535, lemon of eucalyptus oil, which is my favorite. I, I tend to use that more because it's strong in it and I feel like it, it works pretty well. Okay. Um, and we have all those ingredients on our website as well, so you can take a look at them. And they, they should be EAP. EPA approved or yes. registered because you know that they've gone through tests, arm tests to make sure that they actually work to deter the mosquito. Avon Skin So Soft. I love that stuff. That works pretty good, but you always have to look at what it, how long it says it works. If it yeah. says four hours, eight to 10 hours. Okay. You know, there was something someone said to me the other day about mosquitoes. Does it matter 
like if you're wearing perfume or if you've eaten something particular that is going to draw them to you? You know, some, there's some myth and myths and facts that, that people, you know, go online and look up. Um, I've heard people say, oh, I eat bananas and that works or eat garlic, something like that. It, I always just say, you know, if you feel like it works, go for it. But what mosquitoes are attracted to are three things. One is your natural body odor. So there could be a smell coming from someone else that they just don't like. Um, and they prefer this next person to them that has this natural body odor that they like. Mm. They're attracted to the carbon dioxide coming out of your body. So yeah. if, I would say if you have more carbon dioxide coming out of your body or heat, they're attracted to your heat, then huh. they're going to, I think, gravitate towards that if it's a mixture of all three of those together that they like the most. Hmm. So those three, the heat, CO2, and natural body odor are all three of the ingredients for mosquitoes when they use their antenna um, to find blood. And it's only the female that bites. The male does not, the male pollinates. The female needs blood to produce egg, her actually her egg cases. I see. So our, um, our blood has protein in it that they will use for the um, egg laying process. Right, um, right. So that's to say- up for animals too, right? Oh yes, mm -hmm. okay. So this specific species, the AD species, prefers human blood. Mm. Now we have our native species that prefers bird blood. Mm. So that's where we see West Nile coming to the forefront. And we've seen this historical West Nile virus coming through. So every year we have West Nile peeking through just due to bird population. So a bird will um, have West Nile virus, the mosquito will bite the bird. Then if they can't find a bird to bite, then they'll just bite a human. Got it. That's how we get West Nile virus. That's spread. This right. specific species, 80 species, we're concerned about because it does have the potential to transmit other viruses, chikungunya, dengue fever, yellow fever, dog mm -hmm. heartworm. All of those diseases, um, you know, dog heartworm is another thing that we have to worry about, but these are um, viruses that now this mosquito is the host of. So if someone were to come internationally into Orange County and they have that virus because the incubation period, they feel like they're not sick yet, mm -hmm. we now have that host mosquito that can bite that person and create almost an outbreak. Wow. So that's something we're really doing our due diligence on. If, if that were to happen, we're on it. Um, well, good, because we don't want to have what just happened. <laughs> that is for <laughs> well, sure. We don't want to have outbreaks, please. <laughs> Everyone's like, no more virus outbreaks, please. Your job is very important, Heather. Yes. <laughs> please. <Yes. Save> us. <laughs> so, you know, right. and it's, it's all um, source reduction. That's the number one um, thing that people can do. And it's so easy is really taking responsibility for your yard. Take charge of it. Look around, even in the littlest places, tell your neighbor, if you are getting bit and you really feel like you cannot find anything in your yard at all, you can call us for free. It's, you know, it's a, it's, we're, um, we're paid actually by property tax. So you've already paid for us. Okay. You can call us and say, look, I've, lo I've looked everywhere. Can you come and provide an inspection for me? We will look around. If we can't find anything, we'll put flyers around the area to make sure everyone knows, hey, you're getting bit. This is what you can do to prevent mosquitoes from breeding in your yard. Right. Mosquitoes have a very small flight radius. So if you're getting bit and you can't find sources in your yard, it's coming from somewhere around you. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know that they can have those resources. So especially now, um, we're almost out of time, but I wanted to be able to just touch on um, the Aliso Creek because there's many people who you know, go there and maybe they see standing water off to the side, but they don't necessarily understand that it's a flowing type of situation. So, so just give us a brief update on the Aliso Creek. Yeah, so as, as for mosquito control in Laguna Woods, what we're seeing is there's a lot of plants with saucers. So make sure your saucers are cleared. Um, we have people calling about Aliso Creek all the time. So I did want to inform the residents in Laguna Woods that is maintained and observed pretty much weekly if our inspector is around that area. Um, we also have other agencies that are, that's kind of their jurisdiction, but um, that is always observed, maintained. If we do see breeding, um, 
our guys are always looking and our special services unit is always um, doing a wide area control effort in that area. Okay. So if you do see standing water, just know we have looked at it. Um, the golf course, people have called about the golf course. Um, we actually inspect that um, pretty much weekly okay. is what our inspector has said. He's found no mosquito breeding as of um, just yesterday. Okay. And he also said that um, he has pretty much looked at it about four times since 2021 started. So he's already completed four inspections, but he looks at it periodically and Laguna Woods always works hand in hand with us on those um, issues. Okay. Well, perfect. Well, good to know. And I appreciate all of the information and, you know, the PSAs have been great. So we've been getting those out there and, you know, more they see it and reminding them, reminding them of what to do, the better off we all are. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And just one more, um, one more plug is we are doing a giveaway a day for California Mosquito Awareness Week this week. So if you had ocvector.org, you'll see it up on our page and you can submit um, to be put into the lottery to win a gift card and a picnic bag. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And we'll be right back after this. Our Saturday movie for today is Fahrenheit uh, 451, and this is the original with Julie Christie. So you may want to catch that today at 3 p.m. with subtitles and 6 p.m. without subtitles, and that is brought to you by Advanced Ear Care. All right, let's take a look at our weather one last time. As I mentioned earlier, it's only going to be in the 60s. For the next couple of days, we are looking at 67, 52, partly sunny skies tomorrow. Same thing, 65, 55, and then on Monday, we are expecting a little rain, 60, 51. If you're traveling in California, our temperatures are looking pretty normal for this time of year. 63, 54, 60, 45 for Santa Barbara, San Diego, 65, 56. High Sierras, 40, 21, Big Bear, 57, 27, Mammoth, for some spring skiing, 45, 25, and then Palm Springs, 85, 56. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you again here on Monday morning with an update from Jeff Parker. Bye-bye.